Welcome to the next enlightening video on your NEA, particularly looking at design this time. And hopefully you've already got a lovely analysis with a good set of requirements shown. And what we're going to do is try and get it so that that can now be turned into a good system design, which will eventually lead to a really good system. Well, let's have a look at the mark scheme for this. Um, basically, this is the least helpful for you as a student to try and interpret what actually needs to be included in your design. It just uses phrases like fully articulated design, almost all key aspects of the investigation solution. It really doesn't help you very much. As with much of the NEA, not only are these 12 marks useful for you for this particular documentation section, but also it really allows the marker to know what to look for for those big marks in your actual technical solution. So let's unpick what is a fully articulated design. You could Google system design, you could look at the wiki book, um, you could look at any other of the resources. Systems lifecycle is well documented in many, many places and you'll see lots and lots and lots of uh, helpful descriptions. What I'm, I'm hoping to do is distill it down, say what is the bare minimum you need to put in for it still to be a fully articulated design. You basically need to have it so that all areas of your solution slash uh, investigation are covered. I really, really strongly want to see everyone give a good top level design. An overview, so in just one or two diagrams, we can see what the whole solution looks like without too much detail. Um, you know, every I think nav diagrams, top down, hierarchy chart, structure chart, a uh, class diagram, exactly how it's going to be programmed, those sort of things that just show the top level without detail, really, really important, with a bit of a description. You need to include detailed user interface design. So whether that's command line or graphical user, uh, whatever it happens to be, if your system hasn't got any user interface at all, it is tricky to say how you're going to test it. So even if you're doing an investigation where there isn't really end user at all, you're still going to need to create a boilerplate to help you test it. That needs to be designed. Course data storage. If you've got a nice little database uh, program, then the DDL is perfect for it in the R diagram. Otherwise, you need to see file stru uh, the file structures. Um, but also, uh, if you've got particular data structures within your program, it's a good, good it's an excellent idea to sort of really spell them out. And of course, the biggest area of process. So if you think about it, this is Ipso, in, out, storage, pro process storage. I prefer pseudocode, particularly for any important algorithms, but you can use flowcharts if you like. Occasionally data flows are useful, but uh, clearly if you've got any kind of network element, you need to show how that's done. Um, clearly showing your clients, server slash peer-to-peer -peer connections, any web APIs you're using, any protocols you're using, the whole shebang. Well, let's, let's unpack that into a bit more detail. Before we do that, why? If you are actually doing this uh, commercially, it might be as a systems analyst, you are analyzing the system and designing it and handing it over to a team to create. So they need to be able to sort of basically build the system. These are the blueprints for your um, for your system. If you are creating a, if you're doing it commercially, then you need to be able to give it to your uh, client and say this is what I'm planning to create we've already signed up the requirements I think this will uh, fulfill these requirements are you happy with it and basically it's a key stage of sign off for a client obviously for you as a student it's for the examiner to be able to mark and design your solution um, and then crucially for me and the examiner and the moderator for us to be able to really 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 look at what your complexity of your system. 
often it's really hard when we're looking at technical solution to really sort of spot where the, the key elements are, even with a bit of description. If in your design you've got absolutely crystal clear, these are the kick-ass pieces of my uh, solution, here's the really technical bits of my investigation, here's how it works. It's then very, very easy for us to find those in the technical solution and say, oh, that's what you're planning to do, you did it, job's good. So let's move on to the different sections. Um, user interface. Basically, I definitely want to see a navigation diagram, even if that's for a command line interface. Uh, I want to see how you can move about within the system. Then crucially, screen designs with annotation. Let's just call up an example so you can see. So, this is a, an ex-student of mine. And here we've got uh, some pretty rudimentary uh, screen designs. But there's a little bit of annotation there. And actually, it goes on and it includes the whole system. Whoops, just jumped. Goes on and includes sort of, uh, the whole system. So you can kind of see how it works. We're not after beautiful, but we are after um, effective. I mean, I would like a little bit more annotation than this. Let's have another quick look at somebody else. So this is another student. Uh, sorry, I thought I'd queued up. There we go. They put a smidge more effort into it. But what they've done is drawn it out and given a little bit of blurbage beside. Both completely reasonable um, ways of doing it. Here's another student gone to a little bit more effort with their production values and given a little bit more extra blurbage to explain why it's working a little bit where uh, different things, what, what events will happen based on clicks. So this is a little bit nicer still. Even, uh, I'm perfectly happy if you're going to use form design, let's look at one more. So this student has actually used um, the form designer in Visual Studio. As long as it's clear that you've spent time and effort designing the form, not just creating it, um, and they've kind of mixed in a little bit of form design with navigation design to, to show what they've done, and there's a reasonable amount of blurbage to kind of explain how this works. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm happy with anything that would allow me to pretty much create those that user interface and for it to work uh, as intended. Um, I've even seen people use interactive, uh, not interactive whiteboards, normal mini whiteboards with a black pen, quickly scroll out the design put some annotation in, take a photo with their phone, and then paste it in as a very, very, very quick way of doing it. Okay, um, process. This is probably, in terms of most marks, the most important section of your design, because of course it's going to count towards the uh, technical solution as well. If you, any key algorithms, anything from table A, um, sorry, table one, group A, it's vital that you show it. And no doubt you've been shown this, but um, I'll just quickly show it again. So there's this magic table, table one, and there are three groups, group A, which lists the algorithms that count as being complex enough to get the top band of marks in your technical solution. It's not limited to this, but this is just examples of the type of complexity. So for instance, um, in terms of SQL, if we see lots of multiple table parameterized SQL statements, maybe using aggregate SQL functions as well, then chances are that is going to be a, a decent complex data model. If we see any of these data structures, if we see any of these algorithms, um, and of course it's, it's, a, it's a matter of judgment, but if you go to the AQA website, you can find this table. It's also in the spec. And you'll see that these are the sort of algorithms that you need to make sure that if you're using them, you are definitely putting them into your design. Uh, there's also a group B, which is a slightly simpler but middle band. 
then there's group C. If you haven't got a decent mix of A, B, and C in your uh, in your in your technical solution, then it's possible that your coursework will be graded as not A level standard. And if that's not, you get virtually diddly squat marks. So any recursive algorithms, anything so that it will involve like a tree traversal or make use of a, a graph or anything like that, definitely wants to be put in. Uh, if you've got a database, your DDL and your SQL, and anything that involves a nice data structure, a tree or a graph or a stack or a queue, anything like that, make sure you include. Ideally, I'd see the pseudocode, flowchart's fine, but we want a bit of a little bit of text to explain how you're using it. I um, mentioned a little bit about storage already. Um, to be honest with you, a file specification must be a posh data dictionary. Uh, it's probably the easiest way of doing it. If you're making use of any online data, so capacity using the World Bank data or some NASA data, then make sure you give a copy of the XML or JSON schema that you're going to be accessing and also the algorithm you're using to access that. If you haven't already got a full normalized database design, you now need to do it. And the best way of expressing this is through the data definition language. Of course, you need an interrelationship model. Ideally, you've shown us the, the normalization to get it to third normal form, but it's this DDL that's important. Apart from anything else, you have to create the database at some stage so um, to write the DDL. One nice little thing, if you're using a Workbench or phpMyAdmin or even access any of those, if you've used the tool to create the database, you can generate the DDL. You might need to clean it up a bit so it doesn't look awful, but it's worth doing. Apart from anything else, you need to blow away the database. It's so nice to have the DDL just to magically recreate it. Okay, let's wrap this up. In order to make sure that you have fully articulated all elements of the design, just have your list of requirements there and tick it off. Have you got some design that meets that particular requirement? Have you made sure that any of your table one, particularly group A elements, are really clearly highlighted in your design for the process? Have you got a bit of GUI, bit of process, bit of storage, bit of communication? If you haven't, you won't even get middle band marks for this. If you've covered each of these fully, then you'll get top band marks. I hope you found that useful. I also hope that it's helped you understand this particular uh, bit of the mark scheme. Um, I would have loved to have gone into more techniques and looked at uh, some more online stuff. Uh, but I'm sure if you, you Google it, you can... Uh, find more design techniques say systems life cycle is very very well documented tutorials point has got a really good um, set of pages on it really hope you find these videos useful and the next video will be looking to explain how to document your technical solution